Yes, we're draining fuel in at the moment, uh, but about put about 17 liters into the wing tank, feeding that into the header. You can hear it running into the header. The okay, concern is that the low fuel light is not showing and the header tank is empty. So I'm wondering if this little circuit that controls it is maybe in reverse so that the low fuel light will actually come on um, when the fuel is above the low mark so as as an in, it's inverted so it's an inverted signal as opposed to the way it's wired now if it is well then we'll just have to stick a transistor in line to invert the the light output but it's not a big deal you can get around that so for now we'll just sit and watch the fuel gauge So I've decided to come out here tonight and um, fix my fuel warning light. Uh, uh, somehow the fuel warning circuitry is reversed um, on the warning system, so the light is illuminating when the tanks are full and the light goes out when they get to the low level point, which is daft. Um, so anyway, so I had a look at the circuitry and I did a bit of a mod on the PC board. So here's another one. And uh, I don't know if you can really see it, but uh, on there there's some cut tracks and some. Uh, oh, let's try and see if we can get some bit of bit of focus here. Uh, no, not really. But anyway, over here there's a cut track. Uh, there's a cut track and two little link wires where I've swapped the the input over. Um, so I've basically taken it from a negative input to a positive input which has hopefully flipped the polarity of the sense circuit and then flipped the, flipped the actual indicator program. So anyway, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take out the other one which is in the back of the panel here, swap it out for that one um, and just get it going. Just been bugging me so I thought I'd come and do it. It's a little bit noisy in here tonight, I've got tumblers running in the background cleaning brass. Um, all sorts of things happening. It's a little bit of chilly at the moment, so keep myself going, get in here and sort this out quickly. Just solder some wires on here quick and get this in. Um, in order to test it, I'm obviously going to have to drain this tank again to the level of um, where I need to get the low, low indicator to come on, and then I'm going to have to adjust the little trim pod over here. Uh, to the right level so the light illuminates then we're gonna have to fill the tank up again and make sure that the light goes out when the tank is full drain the tank and make sure it comes on again and then obviously refill it and repeat the process but anyway that's for another day right now let's whip out the old one put the new one in and um, just get that uh, done tonight well yeah let's get going so we're just going to start off by doing this uh, one sort of one wire at a time. I'm just going to whip out that one there. I'm going to take the actual sense wire off. So this is the one from the sender unit. I'm just going to get a little bit more slack out of here. I'm going to move the sender unit wire over at the moment. Okay, so in terms of by flipping it over so that we've got the resistance measurement the other way around um, in order to have a successful test button we're gonna have to use a relay uh, to do that so we've got to disconnect the sender unit which essentially offers a high impedance to the to the indicator board and the high impedance will then turn the light on because at the moment now a low impedance turns the light on, which is the incorrect way of doing it. So the test button at the moment, you ground the input line. By grounding the input line, you turn it on. Okay. A bit of heat shrink on here. was not the greatest solder job but um, 
It'll do. It'll do. Oh, that is terrible. That is absolutely terrible. Place. Right, let's take a positive, let's take power off. Let's go to the next one here. Let's connect the power button. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to take that one and we're going to take power from the relay. Put it in there, so we're going to shorten this wire. I really need some better lighting in here. But uh, one of the bonus things is today the one of my documents from Civil Aviation came through. So that means we're one step closer to moving this thing out of this hangar and into another hangar. Okay, positive, positive in there. Just now. This is where it becomes a challenge because now I've got these things. This is where I need three hands. Anyway. And the likelihood of getting burnt is extremely high. Yeah, it's getting hot. There we go. That seems to be a fair winner. Okay, that negative goes to the test switch. Another negative from the test switch. Okay, so the negative ground from the aircraft and negative from the test switch remain as they are. Alright, so we've got positive and negative onto the control board. The negative needs to go to the switch, which is the purple wire on here. See if I can get into the back there and actually disconnect it in there. Um, we've got all right, this green wire goes to control board. That's the sender wire sensor. The actual sender unit. So let's put that guy in. And then all that's left is the actual light wires from the actual LED itself. So that's essentially all besides this. So we can either just solder these two together or I can undo it at the back of the switch and put it in properly. The problem is I put flipping Loctite on this switch so I don't actually know if I'll be able to undo it in the back here. We'll give it a bash quick and see. Yeah. I'm not gonna undo that. I'm not in a hurry. Anyway, what we'll do is we'll just we'll just have to join these two wires up. Oh well there we go. Now theoretically that light should not come on. And then it comes on when I do that. So that works. Now to check if it actually comes on when we have a low fuel indication. Okay, awesome. Now it's just to tidy this mess up. So I went to go and buy a roll of tape today and um, happened to walk across the car park and notice the composite store and um, I ended up with a, a bag of matter. Um, epoxy resin and a hardener, but not, and um, yeah. So watch this space. We're gonna get um, stuck into something different again. Uh, got a little bit sidetracked here. We were almost ready to get going, but we're waiting for some paperwork. And Foxhound sitting in the garage waiting. My mind starts thinking of things that we could possibly add and a few more other modifications to, to potentially do and while, while I 
a running yellow tape up inside the lift strut to try and hide uh, the landing knife wires. Right, let's do this differently. Let's cut all of small pieces, get this cable in place. Now I think we'll do a section from the jury strut to the bottom and from the top to the jury strut. Let's cut a section off here. Let's have a quick look. Okay, so that's what we're doing. We're hiding these wires in the tape. It doesn't look the greatest, but uh, it'll do the trick. And that's simply because the wing is sealed. The tip of the wing, some idiot went and sealed um, when they were covering the wing they did, did some new covering on the wing they took the wing tips put the wing tips in screwed the wing tips into the last rib and then went and covered over the screws on the wing tip so you can't actually remove the wing tips um, let's see if I can show you so there's the wing tip okay here's the edge of the wing tip uh, and there's the screws underneath the fabric so we can't actually take this tip off, which is great because when you take a tip off to get into the rear um, spar, which is here somewhere, to be able to run cables to the landing lights and cables to the nav lights. So that's why we haven't put nav lights on. But so the quick fix for the landing lights was to run it up the back of the lift strut and then tape it all in place, which is what we're doing now. 